morning, Ebenezer. Uh, what did I do with my program? What did I do with my, my copy of the program? No, I thought I walked up here with it somewhere. <coughs> You passed them all out, which you did. I thought I had one coming for myself. No, that's not it. That's not it. Because the line I, I had written something in it. Yeah, I know the same. Yeah. Yeah. that. <laughs> I thought I had it in my hand. Mm. I set it down some some kind of way sometimes. So that's what happens. Uh, responsive reading, page 562, stewardship. Page 562 in the back of the red hymnals, stewardship. Five sixty two stewardship. When you have it, say amen. amen. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise he and likewise that had received two, he also obtained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of my servant come and reckoned. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His voice said unto him, Well done, that good and faithful servant, that hath been faithful over you, and you shall rule over me, be ruler over all many things. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Then he which had received the one talent and came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid a talent to the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is in His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou art 
change it. And my coming. And my coming. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto one that hath has to be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away. Give that that which all together, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen? Amen, amen and amen. Our morning prayer, Deacon Ray. Somebody want to pick out a morning hymn for me? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. church cleaning this Saturday coming up. We have a day off. No church cleaning. However, there will be church the next day. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So what did I say? We said no church cleaning. No church cleaning. There will be church next day. Amen. Amen. Also, the pastor will be preaching over at Mount Rose next week. So there will be a guest preacher. There will be church. Amen? Amen. There will be a guest preacher next week. Amen? Amen. All right. September birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, the pastor and first lady uh, separated, I mean not separated, uh, celebrated. <laughs> celebrated a, a nine year, 900 year anniversary on Thursday the 19th. Marilyn Rice, birthday is the 29th. Willie Rice separ uh, celebrated his birthday on the 15th. Amen. So to everybody, happy birthday and happy anniversaries. We're very glad that uh, we made it one more year. Amen? Amen. All righty now. Uh, our sick prayer, on our sick prayer list, 
We have Sister Carolyn Williams. Has anybody talked to her lately? I've been meaning to give her a call. No, um, last I talked to her was she was having problems with phone. She, okay. She got, got a new number and new phone. Yeah, you told me, yeah. Yeah. I haven't talked to her. Oh, Do you yeah. have her number? Do you have her number or not? Uh, Sister Leah Rice, Sister Ashley Rice, Sister Judy Gordon, Mary Bowman, Renetta Tyler, Gloria Wilson, uh, Davia Richardson, Karen Argus, Patricia McLean, Gladys Allen, Sharon Wade, Rose Hillen, Joyce Bradshaw. Uh, we keep the, the Ramsey family in, in prayer. Miss Gladys Ramsey, she uh, went on to be with the, with the Lord uh, last week. Amen. So let's keep her family in um, prayer. Uh, Keisha Israel, Kathleen Warner, and our sister Marilyn Weiss, Rice. What's wrong? I'm, I should have glued these teeth in. Sister Marilyn Rice uh, is feeling under the weather today. Uh, Brother Brother Ray says she just tuckered herself out. You know, some sometimes we just we. Yeah, we need a rest. We burn all the gas in the tank, and so she's getting refueled. And so let's keep her in prayer. Uh, Brother Butch McLean and Larry Coles, Leon Austin, Dion Austin, Rodney Bradshaw, George Stevens, Travis Grove, Curtis Hunt, Bill Kiwudunya. Let's keep all the brothers and all the young men in prayer. We, we, let's keep all the people in prayer. All those who may not have been on my list, but you're standing in the need of prayer. We're going to send out a, a mass prayer for you. And remember, somebody prayed for us at one time, even before we knew that we needed prayer. So let's, let's remember them in prayer. Brother Willie, if you do the sick prayer for us, we appreciate it. Because a lot of folks out there suffering, and young folks with cancer now. And that's such a hard terrible thing for a parent to have to deal with a, a child with cancer you know this I, I don't know if it's in the food or if it's in the sky or what it is but it seems like we're getting sicker faster nowadays Amen. so I, i'm thankful for the help that i have okay. I haven't gone to the country yet this morning today. I've sick people. Anyone there is sick. We just heard that you sick to us. And we have to touch each and every name. Names that each yes. that I've had to say. Yes. And that's where it's touching the Lord. I don't know what they're going to do. They won't go through the room. Yes. We do. We'll have comfort with them. An angel says, I've been sat for all time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> he almost tall as you now. <laughs> Amen. Good to see Sister Colette in the house. Little M. Uh, welcome of our visitors. 
All those who may be visiting us for the first time out there in uh, media land, we welcome you and uh, we ask that you continue to come and, and uh, worship with us and tune in and, you know, eat up the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Marilyn is not here today to do the uh, scripture reading. So I'll ask uh, the First Lady if you would just pull a scripture out and come and uh, do the scripture reading for us. Amen. Amen. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, Eodius, and beseech Sintites, that they that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with cleanliness also and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Yes. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, I'm sorry. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, yes. and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. May the Lord and a blessing to the reading and the hearing of His word. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. Let's not forget our building fund jar over there. The deep. Fourth Sunday. Yep. So have a pastor's collection. Pastor collection there, first lady. Hey, Pastor collection there. Thank you. 
Amen. It was a little while. I was a little, a little reluctant on turning on the air this morning because, yeah, it was. A... Y'all, you okay? Y'all need to turn on the fan? Something. Our scripture today comes from Matthew 19 and 14 and then John 4 and 40. It's printed on your programs. Matthew 19 and 14 and John 4 and 40. Matthew 19 and 14, John 4 and 40 reads as follows. But Jesus said, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. John 4 and 40. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his, of his word. After this next song, the next voice you hear will be there. The pastor has a message. I've never been one to back down.
Church, we need to break every chain. Every chain. It says, but Jesus says, suffer the little children and forbid them not coming to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And the second scripture says, but when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. Heavenly Father, as I come before you to present this message, I ask that you remove me and replace it with thee. Heavenly Father, guide my words, guide my heart, guide my mind. Allow me to deliver this message, Heavenly Father, so that it may be absorbed, chewed, and manifest, so that it would glorify your name, Heavenly Father. Open the eyes of someone who has had their eyes closed. Open the hearts, Heavenly Father. Give them understanding. Give them love. Give them peace, Heavenly Father. Know that your way is the only way. It's not our way, but your way, be, your will be done, Heavenly Father. Touch us and bless us in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, I ask. Amen and amen. amen. The Samaritans, our modern day refugees. Lock them up, I say. Well, not I say, but it's been said. Lock them up. Let's put them in some cages. Separate them from their mothers. You see, they, they, the, the Samaritans, they don't belong here. They, they come from some terrible places and they are some terrible people. They're having babies and I think that if you're going to have babies and you can't take care of them, then you shouldn't have babies. Church, I'm astounded by the things that we hear coming out of the mouths of folk who call themselves Christians. I mean, we have heard it all, especially over the past few years, and it's only getting worse. Amen. Over and over again, folk who profess to be God-fearing Christians are saying these abhorrent things. And some folk are saying them in the name of God, saying them in the name of our precious Lord, saying that God told me to say this. But if you read the scripture, if you know the scriptures, when it comes to the children, you see so many churches want to just get rid of the children, wait till they grow up. But when it comes to the children, Jesus says, suffer the little children, not bring them unto me. For such is the way that you're going to get into heaven, you have to be like a child. And being like a child means that you're open and you're able to absorb and under, not really fully understand, but be able to accept everything. You see, we're not born prejudiced. When we're born, we're innocent and we're accepting. Amen. Amen. We love everybody. Have you ever seen two children, two small children, a black one and a white one? They're hugging each other. They're loving on each other. They have no idea of what this separation thing is. Yet, as they grow older, they are taught these different things. Some folk say I'm in the name of God and then they claim to be the great followers of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Take my jacket off for a second here because it's about to get hot. So yesterday, as I was at work, I had a conversation with an elderly man who was around the age of 87. And as the conversation grew and we talked about many things, about the prices of food, the prices of gas, we talked about greedflation, we talked about many things. And then we started talking about job opportunities. We talked about this current situation where people are trying to say that folks are eating dogs and people are coming into our country and that anyone that has come into the country needs to be kicked out. And he made a statement that triggered me. And God, I know you heard that conversation, so I have to ask you now for forgiveness because it didn't go well after that. You, you see, I am the pastor, but I have still this flesh stuff, and so I haven't figured out how I can walk on water or 
change Gatorade or water into wine or make anybody blind see or anything like that. I'm still human, amen? amen. And, and so I, I, I watch myself and I, I guard myself, but you know Satan likes to slip you. He, he comes under the radar on you. And so all was going well and I was conducting myself pretty well until he said, you know the problem is we need to stop the Mexicans from coming in. And it was at that point I asked him, where was his ancestors from? Because he said, this is our country. And I said, once again, sir, in the most mannerable, respectful way that I can ask you, where did your ancestors come from? Amen? Because, you know, we didn't ask to come here. Amen. And his ancestors came here to find a better life. But the real original owners of this land, the indigenous people that they misclaimed and misclassified as Indians, are the true inheritors of the land. And so he says, he looked at me blindly in the eyes and says, well, I don't know. I said, well, that's a shame. You don't even know where your ancestors came from. But let, let me enlighten you. They didn't come from here. And they came here to get a better life. And if they were back in biblical times, they would be called the Samaritans. The unwanted people. Like you want to call the Mexicans the unwanted people. You see, people come because they want a better life. Amen. They want something a little bit better than what they had. If it was so great where they were, they wouldn't come here. Amen. But you see, we're a melting pot. And we all deserve a chance at a good life. Amen. But what really astounds me is the ones that profess to be Christians. You see, these are the ones that bother me. Church, do you know who the Samaritans were? Do you know what Jesus said about the little children? I just read it for you, so it should be fresh in your mind. Does anybody remember what Jesus says about your neighbor, whether he be from next door or either from another country? You see, the Samaritans are from another land, another country, another place. Yet they were despised by the Jews. They were hated by the Jews because they were not Jewish. They were looked down upon because they didn't come from where the Jews came from. And the intermingling thing, the, the intermarriage, the interrelational thing was just a real bad taste because then you were cast out and called a Samaritan, which was the equivalent of being called the N-word right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is somebody here with me today? Do I have somebody in this church that's listening to me today? So, so you see, these folks were despised. And, and, and they were from different countries, but a different land. But you see, because they're from somewhere else, people didn't want to even recognize or understand who they were. That, that's the situation we're finding ourselves in. My, you know, time keeps repeating itself. And when I hear someone say, those people, because typically they're talking about us, but now they've got the fingers going all over the place, as long as they look like us, they are part of the those people. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see, so once again, God, I ask you to forgive me because I did get a little irate. And two or three words weren't in the Bible that I used. See, I'm going to tell you, I'm... I have to be honest with y'all. Now, if y'all upset, y'all can just fire me, but I'm going to always try to tell y'all the truth. See, because there's a lot of folk walk around here like they're all perfect. You, you know, years ago, I used to think all the pastors were just these perfect people until I caught them outside church. And I almost didn't go back to church. Amen? Amen. Because they stand up there and they act like they were holier than now instead of saying, hey, I got some issues, I fall down. Anybody in here don't fall down? Mm -hmm. yes. See, we, we got this thing called Christian cussing. See, you might not cuss in the cuss words. But anybody did that Christian cussing before? Mm -hmm. We fall down. Yes, so we know who the Samaritans were. Jesus tells us to love our neighbors, and he holds us. He told us to take care of the little children and the poor. 
Amen. He also told us in Mark 14 that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You see, because we're so busy, as I was explaining to this gentleman, the problem is that the rich don't want to pay their share of what they owe. I, I, I listened to Warren Buffett the other day say, I paid my taxes, my 27%. And if the other 68 billionaires in this country just paid what they owe, then none of us would have to pay any taxes. Now, I'm not trying to get political, but I know we're, 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 we're a church. But you think about that. And he also stated that if they paid their fair share, they would never even miss the money that they're paying. Mm -hmm. But yet they want to charge us an arm and a leg, and then they want to say it's our government. No, it's the government is not doing it, but there's been some factions of the government that says that you can do it. Then there's others that say this is not fair. There's five meat companies in this America that control the price of meat. And they get together and they says, well, since the pandemic, they're going to pay it. So we just keep jacking the price, even though we don't have a shortage. You, you see, they take advantage of us. Mm -hmm. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And just why did he say that? Well, because many folks with money would rather go to hell and burn in eternal flames than to give up their riches. Remember when the man who has much asked him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, well, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor. Whoa, oh boy, did that set him back. That set him back. He says, give it to the poor. That stopped him dead in his tracks. The strict scripture tells us that the man was sad and he went away grieved because he had great possessions. You see, when we ask someone to give up what they have, to give it to somebody else, yes, quite often they look at you like you have two heads. Mm -hmm. Yet they don't understand it was God that blessed them. And when you get blessed, you're supposed to bless somebody else. Amen? Amen. You see, church, just like the man that had much, we have a difficult time giving up what we have amassed to give to someone else. Some folks find it hard just to tithe, let alone give up their possessions to somebody else. Somebody missed that right there. Is, is it not? Do y'all hear me? There's yeah, some yeah. folks who find it difficult just to tithe yeah. every month. Yes. Yeah. Preach. So you know they ain't going to give up nothing to the poor. We've been blessed beyond what you can imagine. We're here in America. Blessings beyond what you could ever imagine. You know there's people who wish that they could go to a church that had a chair to sit in. There are people who wish that they could go into a kitchen and turn on a stove, whether it be electric or gas, and cook food. There are people who wish that they had food to go to a stove to cook to eat. And yet we take it for granted here. We get all puffed up like we are somebody here. Oh, we say that we we, we give our stuff away. We, we say we help the poor. We say we do this, that, the other thing. Really? Really? Would you really do that? Yes. Would you? You know a lot of stuff come out the big gate. And when you try to impress somebody in God, you say a lot of things because you want to sound puffed up. We say a lot of things, but when it's time for the rubber to meet the road, the story changes. We sing a new song, and then we back out of our words. Amen? Amen. But you see, the proof is in the pudding. If you're going to do something, you do it. You don't need to broadcast to the world. It's okay sometimes if you want to mention it, but don't tell somebody you're going to do something and then you don't do it. Amen. Just to impress somebody else. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, a lot of folk want to say, well, I'm going to do this. But when it comes time, there's every excuse in the book, and they never do it. Anybody ever been disappointed like that before? Had somebody tell you, I'm going to do this, that, the other for you? 
I'll be there to help you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. But then when it's time for them to gonna, they ain't a nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Ain't answering the phone. And now we gotta call our ID on these things. Y'all know they don't answer the phone. Oh, fuck. That's, that's raw. I don't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know how it is. Yeah, she, she called me when I told her. No. Mm -mm. It's a shame. Say so many things. Backing out. We freeze up. We fall short of our words. And yet, we say that we are Christians. We say that we must. Be saved. What must I do to be saved? But when we find out what we have to do to be saved, if it's just the smallest thing, we don't even want to do that. Mm -hmm. We say that we're Christ loving, God fearing Christians who follow his teachings, and yet, yet, we want to deny others the same opportunities and right to a life that we are enjoying right now. We say a lot of things in an attempt to oppress folk, but really, do we really mean it? You know, driving in this morning, I don't know if you paid attention to it, there's a little church that says, we believe in the truth. But half the cars in the lot had bumper stickers that show that they don't believe in the truth. I mean, I just want to know, how can you say that you love God when you hate your neighbor? How can you say that you love God when you turn a blind eye to someone who's in need? How can you say that you love God and you follow his teachings when you're not willing to give someone else an opportunity that you have? When you want to discriminate and tear them down and even kill them? When you threaten their lives? How can you say that you love God when you don't love your neighbor? You can't love the Samaritans, how are you going to love God? Amen. You want to deny the children, how are you going to love God? And yet they want to separate the children from the parents. They want to do all these things. The children come and they don't even want the children in churches. I remember a church I went to, I'm not going to mention the name. But there were some children in the church that used to cry a lot. A couple of the members says, why don't you take those children in the back? Why don't you just bring them back when they grow up and learn not to cry in church? You know what I'm talking about. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. And you know what happened? The parents stopped coming with the children. Haven't been back. Suffered the little children. Because that's our tomorrow. That's our future. That's how they learn about the Lord. They cry a little bit. Be understanding. Be patient. Because guess what? You weren't born grown. Amen. There was a time they had to change your diapers, wipe your nose, and put up with your whining. Amen. But yet we want to forget those days and cast the children to the side. That's our future! But we don't want to acknowledge them. We should love the children with every ounce of our hearts, each and every child. We should love all of the Samaritans, no matter where they came from, because we all came from somewhere. I'm a foreigner in this land, but yet I love all of you. I mean, I love your football team, but I love you. But you see, folk want to discriminate even if you're from another city, amen? amen. People want to look down on you if you're just from another, st another street. This world is so messed up that we've been divided so much that we don't want to love our neighbors. And I forgot to tell you the title of our message is, Why Me? I ask God, Why me? Not that anything bad had happened, but why me? What did I do that singled me out from the rest? Where is the flame that I should have lit to lead others? And yet, God chose me. 
You, you see, as a pastor, as a minister, as one that's preaching the word, I ask myself, why me? Because I came from such a sordid, terrible past. What was it about me that he saw me that says, I need you, I want, now I need you, I want you to go out and be a light to the world. Because I was a dark spot in folks' eyes, amen? amen. See, when you can recognize where you came from, you can understand where you're going. But it's until then that you look in the mirror and you say, this is who I was, but look what God done for me now. Yes. And as I ask why me, I, I still have questions, why me? Why me? I am flawed, disgusted, and fractured, and yet he chose me, but church, I'm not alone. No, because he chose you also. He says, I'll pull you out of your pits of degradation because I love you so much. I want you to be the best that you can be, but you don't know how to be that yet because you haven't turned to me. And when you sit and you cry, because I've had tears in my eyes before when I'm asking why me, why am I being blessed so abundantly, knowing that I've messed up so terribly. See, a lot of y'all don't know what it is to really mess up. Y'all might have stumbled a little bit, but to really mess up. And boy, when you recognize that you really messed up and God still loved you, Amen. that he gave a son to sacrifice for you so that you can have everlasting life, yes, so that you can go through the eye of a needle. Yes. He chose you for a certain reason. He says something, he saw something in all of us that made him choose us. Something that says we are worthy of his grace, his love, and his mercy. Amen. Amen. And I'm so glad that he saw it in me because I didn't see it in myself. Quite often we don't even see our own potential because of our flaws and our misgivings and our stumblings and our paths that we've gone down. You see, he saw something that we couldn't see because we were so blind to the follies of the world that we couldn't see the forest for the trees. And yet he saw in us what we didn't see in ourselves. He called us by name. We were labeled and set aside for his purposes. We found favor. We found grace. And we found mercy. All thanks to our Lord and Savior. Yes. Now I understand why I mean. Because you see he loved us. He loved us so much he gave his only begotten son. He says, I will pluck you from the thorns. I will bring you out of your darkness. I will give you joy. I will give you happiness. I will let you understand what your purpose is. I will allow you to go down these paths so that you can help try to lead somebody else out of their degradations. Yes. You see, you can lead by example. You can talk and you can witness by example. Because without example, no one wants to hear it. Amen. If I was all polished up, what could I say? There's a lot of people, uh, preachers that are all polished up. They really have some really good lives, but then when they go into the pulpit, they, they can preach very strong, but you see the people don't tend to want to always stay gravitated towards them because they haven't gone through some things. See, when you go through some things, there's some folks sitting out there that have been through some things, and they want to know how they can get out of the stuff that they've been through, and some, some folks still go through some stuff, amen? Amen. And they want to know how to get out of it. They don't want to know about all this perfect stuff that's always been. They want to know that my life's jacked up now. How do I get right? Yes. You see, when I stood outside the church door, afraid to go in because I was flawed, dirty, filthy, tore up from the floor, not wanting to contaminate the church, it wasn't until I stepped in and I realized that when the preacher spoke to me, and you all to have one of those moments where you're thinking he's just talking to you and nobody else. And you're like, why do you keep putting me on blast? But he's talking to everybody. But that's how that conviction works. And so when you have that, that's when you can speak and you can, can connect with folk. Because God says, I choose you. So when I ask why me, he says, because you are exactly what I needed. You are exactly what I needed to go out into the world and talk to folk. You see, you understand what it's like to be stuck in the miry pit laying on your back with nowhere to go but up. You know what it's like to have want to give up on life. And I don't know about y'all. See, a lot of folks don't know I had given up on life. Do y'all know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? That means I wanted to be unalive. 
But God said, no, I choose you. Amen. Get up. Brush yourself up. You have called me. I've heard your plea. I've heard your cry. I know your degradation. I know your suffering. I know your pain. And guess what? It's not gone unnoticed. But I've been saving you for this particular moment so that you can go out because there's somebody else that's laying in that pit that needs to hear your words. There's somebody else that's sitting on a pew somewhere and they're suffering and people think that they see the smile, they see the joy, they see the false happiness on their faces when all the time they're tore up inside, they're ripped like barbed wire being pulled through their bodies. And they need to hear your word. They need to hear how you came out of it. And it wasn't me, it was God who brought me out. Yes, when I had no one else to turn to. See, mama was dead. Daddy was dead. My sister told me I was going back to prison. The other sister wanted me to get high with her. The other sister was just lost. My brother didn't even want to talk to me. So what was I going to turn? My friends were all gone. But when I turned to God, let me tell y'all something. When I turned to God, he didn't turn away from me. When I called on God, he didn't say no. When I asked him for help, he said, I'm here. When I said, I need you, he said, I know. I've been waiting on you. And all he had to do was listen. And when he listened and heard my cry, he pulled me up. He brushed me off. They poured the blood on my head. And all of a sudden, the blood was gone. I was washed whiter than snow. And here I am. I am a testimony to let you know what God can do for you. He didn't just do it for me. He died for all of us. God sent his only begotten son so that you and 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 you, and you all of us can have everlasting life. Yes. yes, sir. We can all pass through the eye of a needle. So the next time you ask yourself, why me? Because God so loved the world. Y'all heard me? Because God so loved the world. Somebody out there didn't catch that. Because God so loved the world that he gave one of his two sons. Amen? amen. Now, did you just say amen and you know that wasn't right? <laughs> that means you ain't even listening. <laughs> he gave his only begotten son. Y'all listen to the preacher because sometimes the preacher can lead you astray. Don't just eat up empty words. Okay, now I ain't got to say it again. I want y'all to be alert. All of y'all to be alert. If you're not listening to me, if you listen to somebody else, be alert to what you're being taught and preached. Yes, because people will mislead you and the next thing you know, you'll be going to the pits of hell. Amen. I purposely said that. But I still love you. Amen. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his what? His what? Say it again, his what? That who may believe in him can have what? Everlasting life. Because he loved us. The doors of the church are open now. I thank you. I hope I've been taking up too much of your time, but I hope you got something out of this message. When you sit back and you ask, why me? When you're going through something and you don't understand why you're going through it, and you say, why me? When you've been blessed and you have tears in your eyes because you've come so far, and you say, why me? You can understand that it's by God's grace, his blessings, his doings, that it was you that he chose. He allowed to go through these things because when you come out on the other side, You'll be able to tell somebody about your plight. You'll be able to tell somebody how you made it. You know that song says, I made it. It's by the grace of God. You know the other song that says, somebody prayed for me. Don't forget to keep praying for folk. The folk on our sick list. When you look at that list when you go home, just pick out a name and pray for them. You may not know them, but just pray for them. Even if you do know them, pray for them. Pray for somebody who needs prayer. We're all standing in the need of prayer. You know the song says, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. If all my heart, hearts and minds are clear, let us prepare. Can I sleep at your house? She's going to beat me up when I go home. <laughs> let us prepare to be dismissed. Amen.
Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to come to your house of worship today, Heavenly Father, to listen to the words that you have presented. Dear God, to understand that when we ask ourselves why me, that there is an answer. That, that you allowed us, that you loved us, Heavenly Father, that you cherished us. You've blessed us with your grace and your mercy. You've been there for us even when we weren't there for ourselves. When we were abandoned and left astray, you were standing beside us, Heavenly Father, there to protect us, to keep danger or hurt harm away from us. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for the love and the grace and the goodness that you've given us. We thank you mostly for your son, dear God. We know we couldn't do it. We know that we stumble and we fall. We know that we like to be perfect, but we strive towards perfection because there was only one perfect being that came on this earth, and that was your son. Thank you for giving us, giving him to us, Heavenly Father. Continue to watch over us and bless us as we go throughout this week, Heavenly Father. Guide our footsteps. Guide our tongues, Heavenly Father. And when we step out of bounds, Heavenly Father, understand that it's not just, we're not trying to offend you, but sometimes, you know, you did let Satan down here to get to mess with us. And we saw what he did to Job, Heavenly Father, and he hadn't stopped yet. Continue to bless us and protect us and watch over us. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, let the church say amen. 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 And amen again. Amen.